once again to Coffee with a Roach, the Lazy Sodcast. My name's Tommy Lucero, and this is our extra stony late Valentine's Day episode, because when you think weed, you think probably late. So that's why this episode's coming in a little behind uh, a little behind the clock there, but <laughs> it's okay. We talk about relationships, war stories, if you will, and uh, Damien Pruitt's with me again, one of my best friends, and actually the longest relationship I've ever had. So, join me, won't you, as we celebrate mine and Damien's anniversary with this episode of Coffee with a Roach, the Lazy Sodcast. (laughs) Testing. to another episode of Coffee with a Roach after a brief hiatus due to uh, being in between living situations, so to speak, and also bringing up uh, this episode's subject at hand, relationships. Uh, I won't get too deep into mine. They just ended because, you know, those scars are just too goddamn, too goddamn fresh. Damien. Uh, co-host for this episode. What's up, Tommy? Glad to be back. <laughs> Our, uh, he's been interviewed before on the show, and uh, like a month ago. <laughs> don't don't fuck up the it's theater of the mind, bro. Interview of my. We were in a, a cavern below a volcano That's for that right. interview. That's right. Undisclosed location. Yeah, man. Uh, you're this is mine and your friendship is probably the longest relationship that I've ever had. <laughs> Ten years this year. <laughs> uh, happy anniversary, friend. Yeah, man. <laughs> With a beer, we would fist bump on that. Beer. Nope, no beer. That's right. Told you, told you. I'm losing weight. I started uh, eating different. Yeah. And uh, not eating bread anymore. Uh, I'm not eating anything fried, or trying not to eat anything fried. Okay. Are you around it a lot? Fried food. Oh yeah. Stuff, yeah. Right? I I work in nothing but food. Yeah. If uh, you can quantify how much I work with food to the amount of uh, money that Scrooge McDuck is swimming in inside that vault, <laughs> imagine those as French fries and me swimming in a chef coat through them. That's yeah. pretty much what my day-to-day work life is like. Okay. Wow. A lot of fried food. That and chicken wings. You know how hard it is not to eat chicken wings just all day long during a shift? Wow. I mean, I make popcorn, and I eat popcorn all night. <laughs> I can't even imagine if I was around real food. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm having, I'm having to, I mean, it's a good problem to have. You know, I'm having to force myself to eat salads and uh, just things I wouldn't normally eat, like, three or four months ago, you know? Mm. Yeah. Like, uh, I'd, I'd stab somebody for a pastrami sandwich on some occasions during the last, uh, since the 22nd. Of last month, I haven't really been eating bread. It was just all of a sudden you didn't, you didn't ease into it, or no? Well, uh, this, that's a good segue, buddy. <laughs> uh, due to things happening in my life and uh, certain relationships ending, uh, it really helped the uh, encouragement uh, to start trying to lose weight. Okay, you know, get back into shape. Not because of the like hollow, shallow thing of. Um, you know, I'm back on the market. You know, want to be something somebody wants to pick up. No, it's more. Uh, I want to be able to walk around in clothes that aren't tight. Okay. Uh, for no, that weren't tight. Maybe when I first bought them, uh-huh. it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of things like that. I'm I'm already able to uh, walk up a flight of stairs easier again. Okay. You know, I've, I've looked at pictures uh, recently, and uh, I those have also yeah. Yes. I, I like the feeling of when you, you suddenly need to wear a belt, or if you're already wearing a belt, you can bring it down another notch. Like, okay, you wear pants that were too too tight before that you've been holding on to. Like, all right, I can wear these again now. There are some uh, <coughs> work pants that uh, are uh, suddenly more comfortable to wear. Yeah, see? <coughs> that were not before. And uh, it's, it's a good feeling. It yeah. instills a lot of confidence. Uh-huh. It, it helps uh, build you back up. But also, you know, just, uh, you don't feel like shit. Mm-hmm. That's why I stopped eating bread. And uh, I figured out that's probably why, uh, what was making me feel so sluggish. That and the depression. 
But yeah, you know, uh, right. once you once you kick both those things, you can start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and know that you can still eat hamburgers. Just they gotta wrap them in lettuce, and you're a freak. They say late at night. Well, your body breaks it down to sugar anyway. That's what <coughs> you get. Yeah. Yeah. Fat. Yeah. <coughs> oh my goodness. Damien, uh, I gotta stop eating maggot cheese and bread every day. Good God, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's intense. <laughs> he cut cakes. <laughs> cut cakes. Shove them in my inside of my mouth like a hamster, so I can eat them while I'm sleeping. But then I go run in the treadmill for nine minutes, so it balances out. Now, yeah, no, the I'm nine just... minutes really does make it even out. <laughs> no, if you didn't have that nine minutes to break down <laughs> those. <laughs> Thousands and thousands of calories you're shoving into your face. Then, uh, yeah. No, I do actually run half an hour every day because they say it takes like 20 minutes before your body even does it, starts doing anything. Hmm. We're actually to a point where we start getting results. Ah. Go at least 20 minutes. That's that's interesting. That's interesting. Huh. That. That means I'm really breaking down a lot of uh, a lot of calories on alone time, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a yeah. you know, not, not to be a like TMI here, but it's at least a thirty minute pop at least, you know, each time around. Uh, this episode is brought to you again by uh, <coughs> Bad Decisions. I was wondering yeah. if there's a sponsor. Like, are we going to break for a sponsor or have a Oh yeah, well, I just want to remind everybody <coughs> that. Without bad decisions, uh, you know, we would never learn a good lesson from life. Okay. You know, peaks and valleys, Damien. Peaksandvalleys.com peaks peaks and valleys. is a... <laughs> <laughs> today. Thank peaksandvalleys.com dot <laughs> org slash <laughs> firefox <laughs> dot gov. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> what is a... What's the most... Well, let's, well, not say bad experience, Damien. What's the most interesting... That you've had uh, in the world of dating and relationship. Interesting. Um, I've had a couple of long-term relationships. Had some crazy chicks. I had a. I was on a double date with uh, this girl. It turned out to be my girlfriend. You know, like my my, my boy. And uh, the the server, she came to bring us. She taking our order, and she had a huge booger in her nose. <laughs> And she came back, she brought the food, and uh, the booger was gone. And I was like, oh, alright. And she brought... <laughs> and she brought... It was only my food, and she brought... It. So, I was... Oh. The girl was like, hey, you, you should have to take it back and get something else. Like, I think there would sure be a booger in there. Probably or something completely different. Oh, that's vile. So, yeah. That's that made me have to crack open the Gatorade. That was a good time. Which is also an unofficial sponsor. Because, uh... Should not be drinking, you know. Yeah, drinking uh, drinking brings bad things, uh, among other things, the cancer. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, or like you can be so fucked up, like like um, where you have to have a surgery in your liver so far gone. Like if they cut your liver, you just bleed out. Like that happened to like with somebody. I seen that on Grey's Anatomy, yeah. Yeah. The fucking the Doctor Gray. Doctor uh, Gray. The Doctor Gray did that. Uh, or somebody did that. She's in the room, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't much remember it, but I've seen it. You know, it was on the TV, the whatever. On the TV. Yeah, it happened. But uh, you, you, uh, you had told a weird one. Let's see. Uh, let's see. It was a good weird one. Oh, I got a couple good weird ones. But uh, I'll start with. Uh, I met this girl at a party uh, during uh, <clears throat> my my last stint as a single person. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked her out and uh, she goes yeah yeah where uh, where would you like to meet at and I go <coughs> well you can meet me at uh, this brewery that I do trivia at uh, <coughs> we can meet up there we'll have a couple drinks and we'll maybe uh, go have another one somewhere else mm-hmm. and we'll, we'll, we'll drink but uh, she goes okay okay so she meets up with me and when she met with me <coughs> she brought this other dude with her so she brought a date to our date, <laughs> and it was really, it was uncomfortable, but then it got even more uncomfortable when uh, 
she told him goodbye and they shoved each other's tongues down each other's throats. Hmm. Like, why don't you, uh, why don't you, why don't you, why don't you get that little piece of information <laughs> uh, when the the agreement was made to yeah. go go on said date? Uh, or, uh, you know. She's on a double date just by herself. Oh, that, yeah, she's <laughs> fucking, she's trying to clean up. So what she's, and, I, she's and double, I'm all she's for, book, you know. I'm all for, you know, the three grown-ups making agreements between each other to do a certain thing, but I, I don't want one of those other grown-ups to have a beard. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's too much for me. You know, yeah. I, I, there's a line that I don't cross, and on this side, I don't do three ways with another guy there. No. Yeah. I got friends who do that back in the day. They just be like, yeah, we picked up with this chick. Like, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Can't do it. Can't be high fiving while we're both chick. No London Tower. No, no London Tower. No. Because that's this does not. Oof. Like I, I couldn't really hang out. They were roommates too. They were like they moved away to San Diego and they're going to school for basketball. And yeah. That shit. It's rough. And, uh, did you? Did you always lay like newspaper down before you sat on the couches and stuff? I, I wouldn't go visit them. I'd wait till they came back to the <laughs> <laughs> I wait until they came back home. I would take uh, the Lysol with me, not the not like a scented one, but just the disinfectant one. Yeah. Just spray wherever I wanted to sit. I should get that one back. That doesn't say much for what you think of me. <laughs> <laughs> I've already cleaned in here, guys. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, we are also broadcasting today from uh, <clears throat> the new uh, Honeycomb Hideout, uh, I'll call it, because uh, that was what I called the last place I was when I felt that I'll be forever alone. <laughs> um, uh, however, uh, I'm very uh, honored, Damien, that you're the first visitor Thank to you, uh, the podcast studio. I'm glad you're here, I'm glad you're happy to be here. I'm yeah, happy. I'm happy to be here, man. It's a uh, fucking sweet, you know. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I'd like to thank the Academy yeah. for making this possible, and all the people that voted for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's another one, man? Uh, that as far as crazy stories, crazy story, crazy, crazy relationship story. Oh, uh, I was told on myself one time. Told I had, on yourself how? I had a girlfriend that was. Uh, <clears throat> she lived out of town. She's going to school out of town, and, and I met this other girl, and the other girl was having a party, and she was friends with my girlfriend's cousin. So this is this other girl, my girlfriend, and my friend's cousin. Were, okay, so the girl's having a party. Mm -hmm. I'm driving over there with my girlfriend and my girlfriend's cousin, and also even my friend's cousin. Yeah. And I'm driving, and I'm realizing I'm going straight to this girl's house. So I stopped myself and I said, hey, uh, hey, how you get to this girl's house? And it's uh, the cousin that she gave me directions, because my girlfriend was looking at me, like, how do you know how to get to this bitch's house? <laughs> so I realized what was going on. I said, holy oh, shit, I was just got myself caught. Like, how do you know where this girl is? Oh, That's intense, bro. <laughs> it's frightening and intriguing all at the same time. It's like a good episode of the Twilight Zone. <laughs> <laughs> or you, even a, you know, like a middle shelf Shama, a Shyamalan. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe like the, the people living in the middle of the woods thing. Okay. It's, it's, that, it's, it's that level of twist at the end. Uh, and, and, and you walk in and Mike is just looking at the wall. And yeah. Mike, Mike. And he's standing and in my there. head, Adrian Brody was playing you the whole time. <laughs> so it's pretty much exactly like the Shyamalan movie. Okay. I was thinking more like a movie where they walk around the woods looking for a map and the guy named Mike and they find Mike in the end. He's just staring in the corner. And they go, Mike! And then the camera shakes and that's it. 
Look, bro, I live by myself now. <laughs> I don't want to have that shit bounce around in my head later on when I'm going night-night. I just think about the second Blair Witch then, because that one's not as good as scary. You know what? I never saw it, so hence, I will not think of anything. <laughs> Thank you, Damien. <laughs> Once again, you've done, you've done me good. This is why we're good friends. You, can always, you can always talk me off a ledge. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How do you feel about, like, I mean, there's not a lot of women doing comedy in San Diego, but if there's more, there's more dating going on, how would you feel about it? Like, if there's some girl from Spring Valley that started doing comedy, that hey, Tommy! Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. No. No, 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 no. No, right. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> For the moment, uh, I'm really, uh, well, I wouldn't say opposed to, uh, well, yeah, I would say a post. <laughs> Just leave me alone, man. <laughs> like Honestly. If, like, if you were in L.A. and there's, like, one more uh, girl comics, would, would you, like, feel comfortable with dating a girl doing comedy? Like, not that... Dating a girl in comedy. In general. Oh, just not, in general. Just yeah, in not general. coming up with Okay, thank women. you. Yeah, I, yeah. I, was, I was taking it way close to the chest, like, right, right away. I'm okay. sorry, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because <laughs> there's not a lot of women to say Yeah, there is a real... Uh, like, but, yeah, if, okay, yeah. Scenario <laughs> A that you've given me. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, I think it maybe. I mean, there's a few exceptions, uh, and I won't I won't name names, but I mean, there's name, there's like a couple here or there, but uh, generally no, because yeah. I don't want to have it end up weird. It, it'd be weird because everything with me ends up fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't I don't aim for it too. I don't try to make it happen. <laughs> but it happens, and you're not trying to have to see my mic. God damn it. <laughs> it it's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, so for that to happen, and then you have to bring them up on stage at a mic somewhere or a show. <laughs> no, I don't... I, I don't... Uh, I don't uh, disagree with all that, you know? The whole dating and comedy thing. But I don't also agree with it. For myself, yeah, me too. Yeah, it's not true for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not my truth. <clears throat> let's see, let's see. Another weird dating story. Uh, I got one. <clears throat> Said it on stage a couple times. Uh, I was seeing a girl, and uh, she woke me up. Three o'clock in the morning. I used to work security at the time, so I have to get up at five to be ready. <clears throat> wake me up at three, and she goes, "Tommy, Tommy, wake up!" I go, "What? What's wrong? What's wrong?" I think there's somebody in the uh, garage. I go, what? How would you know there's someone in the garage? I can hear them. I can hear them in the garage moving around. And I go, "Oh shit!" She goes, "Here, take this knife and have by the bed, and go check the garage." And my first response to that was, yeah, why, do you, <laughs> why do you have a knife by the bed? Exactly. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. And I guess rose-colored glasses, because she told me, don't worry about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but just go check the garage. I would go and check the garage, and there'd be nothing there. I'd go check the backyard, nothing there. I'd come back. She'd still be sitting on the bed, like, uh, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It was a frightening thing at the time. Uh, I don't know what's going on with those folks now, but I hope everything's good. <laughs> but golly, those were crazy pants days. Wow. Man, that was a weird one, too. I was uh, I was drinking absinthe. I never drank absinthe. It was like the real stuff that makes you like hallucinate or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I was drinking that shit with a girlfriend, and it was like later that night. It was like 3 in the morning, <clears throat> and I was dreaming that I was laying in bed, which I actually was. Yeah. And uh, the huge spider came out of the like the ceiling, and I woke up thinking it was real. And I woke up, hey, it's a huge spider! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> and I woke her up, and she's like, oh, what? And, oh, it was just a dream. And I, and I guess I went back to bed like immediately, mm-hmm. and she was up for, like an hour, hour and a half, like <laughs> Jesus spider. Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's weird the where the different uh, sects of life that. Uh, you expose yourself to out of love. You know? 
That was like, uh, it's I don't know funny story that chick. Like, we were just laying there and I sneezed and I headbutt her. <laughs> like, I cranked her right there. <laughs> I started oh, laughing fuck. and I was like, oh, fuck. Sorry about that. Sweet Jeep. <laughs> I went to a concert with a, uh, a girlfriend one time, or a date, we'll say, not a girlfriend. Well, whatever. But mm-hmm. <laughs> a significant other. We went to a concert, and she insisted on going into a mosh pit. I won't say what concert it was. I won't say who was on stage or anything like that, because that would give it away. <laughs> so she goes into the mosh pit, and uh, I'm standing back, and she insisted on going in there. I didn't want to, because I was being old. And uh, she goes around in there, and from my vantage point, I saw somebody... Get uh, hit in the back of the head when somebody jumped off the stage. They got kicked in the head. But I saw the back of that person's head. I didn't see the face. Nothing like that. But when my significant other showed up back out of the mosh pit, she was holding the back of her head. <laughs> <laughs> and saying, somebody kicked me in the back of the head. And I said, holy shit. And in my head, I said, I saw exactly what happened. Out of my mouth came, let's go get a drink. <laughs> <laughs> that seemed to work a lot better than trying to hunt down somebody that could probably beat the shit out of both of us. So, oh, Jesus Christ, dude. We're going to take a brief intermission because I need to gather myself. You know, there's all these uh, emotions. This is like therapy, you know. I, <clears throat> I don't got the insurance. So, uh, my therapy only gets to come maybe once, twice a month now. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so it gets a little more weird. Uh, until I get to the therapy, then at least a week after that, I'm smooth sailing. <laughs> <laughs> until then, this is kind of like a good good kind of therapy. Alright. You know, like, like, I don't... Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad you're here, man. Thanks, man. And I'm glad our sponsor is Hidden Valley... Hit- Peaceandvalleys.com Peaceandvalleys.com <laughs> Slash HTTP <laughs> Firefox Dot gov Org Slash org Dash edu <laughs> We'll be right back after this Brief uh, message Valleys Peaceandvalleys.com <laughs> Hey everybody out there We here at the Big Pharma Company Just want to remind you that we're here for you And when you're feeling down, we got the perfect thing to get you back up on your feet again. Our new antidepressant called Sadinol is the exact thing that'll get you smiling and happy all over again. However, there are some side effects, such as the inability to smell. Just your sense of smell is entirely gone. Or a sudden... Infatuation with Jerry Lewis. Also, your hair may fall out. Clinically proven to make your nails fall out. Your teeth may rot. Premature brain rot. Also, your eyes may bleed. That's right, your eyes may bleed. It's not proven that it was the pills that did it, but most people that take them, their eyes do bleed. So, that's that's something that you should probably uh, think about. That actually make me more sad. Also, it's known to possibly make your skin peel. Not like a sunburn peel, but more like just come right off, really. Like, have you ever seen a, you ever seen a snake, snake uh, lose its skin? Nice. Kind of like that, it sheds. It's uh, something to see. So just remember, we're here for you guys. And uh, I'm Damien for sitting in too. Yeah, glad to be here. A lot of fun been awesome sitting with you again it's always great sitting with a, a good friend as opposed to someone i just kind of like you know there you go yeah man makes a better better podcast better for a listener yeah more, more fun s- yeah you know a little more sexy for the ears <laughs> <laughs> yeah man well, a little more ear sex <laughs> as the kids say i think they say mm-hmm. that i don't know but also want to take this time to give a like a final thought if you will on the whole subject today. 
See, there's there's a lot of local podcasts you could be listening to, but you chose this one. And for that, we want to say this reminder to always stretch. After every, every strenuous activity. Oh, wait. I'm fucking up. <laughs> for tuning in today uh, on another Coffee with a Roach Lazy Sidecast. Uh, been great sitting here with Damien, good friend of mine. Yeah, man, glad to be back. It was a lot of fun. I'll come back whenever you have me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time, bro. It's yeah, fun, uh, fun sitting down with somebody that uh, I actually know who's a friend of mine, as opposed to somebody that I just like, kind of know. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a good time. It's a lot. It's a lot more fun. It's more, uh, I think you said, more fun for the audience, mm -hmm. the listener, yeah. the theater of the mind, if you will. That's right. Uh, it's a good time. And it's <clears throat> just important to remember certain things like that and remember friends and important lessons in life. And we also want to take this time to remind you, good listener, you could have listen to any local podcast today, but you chose this one. So, with that in mind, I'd like to take this time to always remember to stretch after any activity, strenuous or otherwise. It doesn't matter if you're doing the decathlon and the Fiji Islands, or swimming from one Hawaiian island to another, or maybe just trying really hard to tie your shoe, but it's just not happening, even though you're exhaling every ounce of air that you have inside you, but it's just not coming together. Just remember, it all goes back to stretching, friends. Thank you for listening to Coffee with a Roach, the Lazy Sidecast. We care. Kind of. Want to make sure and tell you guys to check out cultmusic.com, C-U-L-T-M-U-Z-I-C.com, you guys. A lot of great music coming out of there. That's also where you can find the back episodes of this podcast. Also, you can check me out on the Twitters at Tommy underscore Lucero. Don't be a weirdo and spell out underscore. It's just a little line on the bottom. Also, you can go to Instagram, check out 40 Ounce to Funny Comedy Shows, and also my personal Instagram, because there's nothing but a good time there. I love Molly Crew, so I try to keep it like that. Take care, guys. Have a good one.